Hi, I'm Margaret Hadfield. I'm an Australian professional artist. My videos are intended to give you a really good grounding and also to enhance your existing art practice or to help you on your way as a total beginner. It is not necessary for you to have previous experience. I teach across all mediums and I'm really happy to share my experience and my knowledge with you. Participating in the creative arts provides health and well-being benefits which everyone can use. I regularly connect with my community via Facebook and I share my students' creations as well as my own. Thank you to my Patreons and remember to like and subscribe if you wish to see more of my videos as I release them. Thank you. Keep calm and paint. I got some plants that I put in pots, a money tree for luck and forget me not. Hi, it's Margaret Hadfield. Um, I'm from Canberra in, in the uh, Australian Capital T Territory in, um, in Australia, if you're overseas. And I have been um, a professional artist for at least 25 years, 30 years or so, been doing markets, all sorts of things. And now I have a, a gallery of my own. I have my own art school and I'm not bragging. Well, maybe I am just a little bit, but um, I'm, I'm very happy to share some of the things I've, I've learnt over the years and I um, am more, more than happy to speed track you a little bit into some of the aspects of painting and drawing that uh, took me so long to do. But um, these days I think, you know, we, we want to learn and we can learn, I can teach you a little bit quicker, I guess. Just speed track you into getting some enjoyment and, and, and having a successful painting. Um, and who knows where it goes, whether it goes into um, earning you some money or doing markets or becoming even a professional. It, it's all possible these days. Um, you can sell overseas, you can, um, you can send your paintings off and roll them up in a tube, all sorts of things are possible now selling online. So uh, as I've been uh, at it for quite some time, I won't say how old I am, but uh, I've been painting for a while and, and certainly when I, when I got into oil painting, uh, I thought, wow, this is great. And there's certain things about oil painting that are so positive in terms you can walk away, you can go and have a cup of coffee, your paint's still there, it's not dried out. It is um, easy to work with in terms of working the wet paints together and that's a real nice thing when you know what you're doing, of course, uh, you can get into a mud pie, I have to say. So um, when you, uh, it just takes practice with everything. You just um, brush mileage again, you just uh, have a go. And it's not as scary as you might think. Sure, maybe it's smelly. Maybe you think it's got a lot of smell. But these days, now we have something called odorless solvent. Now this is t uh, mineral turpentine with absolutely no smell at all. So it's a little dangerous in that you, um, you don't want to put it in anything that looks like a jar, but um, that has no smell. So I'm sure you can buy it around the world, not just, not just here with this company. I'm sure there are others if you're um, overseas. So the fact that you can have turps under your nose without any smell whatsoever is a real bonus. And of course, um, oil paint can upset the rest of the household. And um, so this is a real innovation. It is a, a big, big step forward. It also is so healthy for, for your lungs as well. The, um, the, the fact uh, I have this particular brand of paint, which is archival oil, which has a low odor. Um, so you may or may not be able to get it overseas, but you can certainly get it in Australia because it's Australia made. Uh, it's a low odour uh, oil paint, but, uh, which, uh, which I sell in my store. But if you can't get access to the, this, I'm sure you can get access to the low odour turpentine. So uh, accompanying these paints, of course, is low odour, um, very low odour, various mediums. So the other issue of oil paint, which is deemed a negative, is it's slow drying. But these days, 
um, uh, this particular paint, it's not slow drying. I guess if you use a lot of linseed oil, uh, it will be slow drying. So these are fast drying mediums that you can add to your paint. The, this paint can be touch dry tomorrow, which is amazing, absolutely amazing, that you can do a painting, it can be, you can touch it, touch it tomorrow, it'll be fine. Uh, so it means, um, yeah, you can send things off to um, art prizes and so forth, enter into things. So it's a, it's a real big innovation as well. It used to take months to, for your paint to dry. So these sorts of things have really uh, changed the aspect of, of oil painting for me. I've been working in this for, for a good 30 years in, in this area, in this particular brand. At first it was actually quite slow drying and they seem to have improved the, the uh, mix of it and, um, and it's quite good. But um, so that's, um, that's this particular brand, but I'm sure you can, you can get hold of um, the Terps if you can't get hold of the actual brand. But uh, that's um, just a little hint as well. Now there are things about oil painting that, that are uh, an advantage. So I, when I'm traveling, when I'm traveling and painting, if I'm plain air painting, I'll use something like this, like a Tupperware container. And I'll put my paint on that and I'll be working out in the open, plain air. This has obviously gone, gone hard. And it, um, it, when I'm finished and I hop in the car, I can put the lid on and off I go. The other good thing about paint, oil painting as well is that I can put that un underwater, I can stick that into a bucket and it'll keep for months, it'll keep for a long time. I'll, oh no, <laughs> I'll shake it off, oops, and uh, shake off the paint and, and off I go. I just managed to get land into that paint but that's all right. So yes, it is um, a little messy, particularly when you do that, but I'll pop that over there. So when you put the paint under water, it just puts it in a stasis and you shake it off when you're ready to go again. You've got all your colors still there and, and that's brilliant. This is the negative, <laughs> of course, getting paint all over your hands. Um, uh, I do have to say it's probably my favorite medium and that's uh, because I can stop and start. I can go and serve a customer, I can talk on the phone and I can come back and my paint's still there. Generally, people use oils more for portraiture because you can work the colors in a bit better and get, um, uh, get the facial features a little bit easier and smoother. You can play with the paint a little bit more. But as I said, you can get into a mud pie as well. So it's just learning to deal with all the aspects of the different mediums. And um, so they're sort of a, it's, a, it's just a thing getting, getting to know it, really. I'm just hoping to, to just unveil some of the, um, the myths of, of oil painting. Now, one of the things I, you, you, can, um, you can be in, um, palette knife, got loads of palette knives here and there are so many different types of palette knives. How about this one here? Can you see that one? It looks like a crown. So why would you want that? I'd probably use that for maybe splashing water. Um, this is um, my regular palette knife here and you know there's so many shapes and sizes. There's also rubber shapers. I just talked a little bit about the tools. The rubber shapers, that could be good for leaves uh, as well. And there's pointy ones, there's so many different things. I've seen some amazing paintings done with one of these. Um, paint shapers, they're called. Uh, they're beaut for oil or acrylic. And uh, yeah, I just love the palette knives and my students seem to love them as well. What I find about palette knives is it kind of relaxes you a little bit. You are not so finely detailed. You have to accept all that you can do with the knife. And it kind of takes a little bit of that pressure of detail away from you. I'll just show you, um, I have a little one here, which is um, the old quarter of, what do you call it? The Gothic quarter of, um, in Spain, I'm trying to think of the name of the city, Barce Barcelona. You've got to have a list for Barcelona. So this one here, um, it's a very intricate 
um, little, little space, lots of lace work. For me, the best way to do a very detailed piece with lots of things going on is to actually relax and do it with the knife and just give suggestions of things. So that's, um, that's what I have found. So my style can change, can change for the various scenes. But I do recommend if you're doing something really incredibly hard, lots of lines, um, try the palette knife with that because it, um, it would just relax it and it becomes a more enjoyable looking painting, like the viewer enjoys it. It looks some, um, you know, suggestions of things. And part of painting is also not showing everything like a photograph, is that you can actually just give suggestions and our minds actually fill in the gaps. We, we put, we see things that aren't even there. So this one just been done on oil painting paper. It was just a little exercise. And it just shows you the value of, of how palette knife can, can work for you. So, um, and working the wet paint is so, such mag magic. I'm going to show you a few little pieces here. This is one, uh, obviously, lemons. Now this is done with brushwork. Now you might see the brushwork direction. So to show the marks and the way the lemon is going as well. So my brushwork is showing the direction of the leaves and I would do the same with the palette knife, whichever direction. So the direction is, is, is with purpose to show how the round it is, put the shadows in. And uh, so that's um, just a, one with brush. It's one with palette knife. Now, remember, um, if you saw the colour mixing course, uh, I did it on yuppo paper. Now this is yuppo paper or yupo paper, which is plastic paper. So the paint was, is able to slip slide off and scratch off. So what I've done is used a really crappy brush, like a, a dead one of these, and really pushed it up like that and got this amazing grassy field. Um, and also you can use your palette knife. You can use a fork even out of the kitchen. Got some forks in here. Oh, this is a specific fork, which is great for grasses. How cool is that? Um, I remember using a little cotton bud to do the clouds there, you know, so just using unusual things that you might have around and certainly putting the um, scratching back. I don't know if you can see that really close, but scratching back, it gives you the little detail of the trees in there. And uh, so you don't have to use a, a fine point brush. You can just use the, the palette knife and scratch back. So that's a pretty cool thing to do. I really um, recommend. I just made up this little landscape, just made it up. So I guess that's what happens when you paint for a while, you can just come up with things. So this one's done without scratching back. This one's just painted. And obviously some gum leaves, again, the direction, softly in the background and just showing brush direction. I'm just showing you just some ideas, basically. This is a snowscape done recently. Um, it's all pretty well in palette knife. Yeah, maybe a bit of brushwork as well, just a little bit of both there. Um, and uh, just all in oil. The thing is oil has a, a lovely texture to it as well. So I can use that texture for detailing. The brushwork can show direction. Um, if it's a tree, it's going that way. The landscape's going that way. If it's cloud, you know, doing little fluffy marks. So that's um, that's what I have come to uh, to learn and, and suggest to you. The um, so there are many surfaces you can you can paint on, and, and obviously canvases need to be well primed, and and um, but you can paint on yuppo and various things. I just want to touch on on uh, by making sure you've got some quality. This is what happens when you don't when you have a real e cheapy cheapy canvas is that they can actually tear like paper. So I really recommend just be a bit aware of um, the cheap canvases that are on the market at the moment. And there are some rubbish on the market. They might be all right for children, but really when you, you really want something a little bit better, this just tears so, so easily. It's really is dreadful. 
Um, so to um, first of all think about what you, the quality you're buying, whether it's the paint, whether it's the canvas, it's all going to help you create a, a better piece and be more lasting as well. I've unfortunately had to repair a lot of damaged canvases because of the cheap cheap materials that's coming onto the market has been for the last years. So just be a little bit aware of that and um, as well. So um, oil painting, you generally have bristle brushes or palette knives. Um, the bristle has a little bit more firmness to it. That's not a particularly good one. That's a cheapy. I, I have a variety. I've got a box full of brushes there. Uh, this one here is a little bit better, a little bit firmer. Um, that's a nice one for doing portraiture. Sometimes I use a pointy, like a more pointed one for portraiture. Flat ones I love and I have a brush which is my favourite brush. Can't see it there, I'll just grab a few. See if it's amongst it. Oh yeah, there's a good bristle. That one there, just a little bit bigger. A nice flat one. And um, this flat tacklon's a bit worn out now but the flat tacklons are probably my, my favourite. Um, brush, but is, you just get to know, get to know um, brushes. The, um, on my palette here, I have my paint selection, which is the three primaries. I've got my magenta, my thalo blue, and the bright yellow. But I've also would include, I know I can make these two colours, but for ease, I have burnt umber and yellow ochre. For me, that's all I need, really. Um, so, and, and white, titanium white. So this is um, all I need, but of course I, I don't have to stick with that. I've got um, lots of colours around, and I love a colour called Payne's Grey when I'm doing snow, for example, or, you know, just doing different things. If I'm doing portraiture, I might use the ultramarine blue. So it's just, um, just depends what I'm doing, but I know this is my basic selection. Now behind me over here, I've got a painting that was done with palette knife. And last year I did a series of these all in different mediums, watercolor, pastel, the same scene over and over again, um, acrylic, ink, and it was an amazing exercise. So I'm, I'm sort of use it as a bit of a res resource now. And so this one is in oil with the primaries, it says so on the back, just with the primaries and palette knife. The whole thing's been done with palette knife. And um, I'm pretty, pretty happy with that. And there's, there's a real advantage of using not too many colors in that you get a more of a subtlety in the change of colour. So it's not suddenly green, it's gradually green, little bits here and there. Whereas if you've got green coming out of a tube, it's like ah, one colour, it's just going to stand out. Whereas this changing colour in the landscape to me is important to get perspective in the landscape. So perspective is the thing I guess that I have really um, really uh, developed, I suppose. And part of that is because I grew up near mountains and the having to paint the sequence of mountains was um, probably the best training ground for me as an artist and, and a landscape artist. I can't say I'm just a landscape artist, but to be able to get that sequence of color, that change of color as things come forward towards us, and, um, you know, I've got this mural behind me which has got perspective in it as well, all over the place and things coming towards you. So it's just something that I have just naturally learnt to do. When I was 13, I sold my first painting of the Warrumbungal Mountains and um, there's nothing more encouraging than someone buying your painting and it's not your mum. So it's just sort of, um, <laughs> when it's not your mum buying your painting, it's like someone else, wow, they like my painting so much. So it's kind of the best encouragement. It's not, to not about money, but it's kind of as a child, it, it certainly is, is very encouraging. Um, and it's just something that I, I love to do. 
but uh, and, and I guess still today that reward is um, when someone wants to buy your work um, and have your work. So I just um, pop that back and uh, yeah, so I'm going to uh, today do this, this little landscape, which is the mountains around Canberra. It's Namadji National Park. And so what I have here is that lovely sequence of mountains, that lovely um, gentle change that happens with, with each ridge. So I'm just going to draw it in on my little board here. Uh, just, I'll shut up for a moment, but only for a moment. doesn't have to be perfect. That's that one there. Okay. okay. I'm using a, a hard pencil, uh, mainly because I don't want too much graphite in the paint. I have uh, it has been known that, that if you've got a dark pencil, it can just uh, discolour your, your paints. Come down here. That's my drawing. See, I don't spend hours drawing. That'll do it. <laughs> Very quick. All right. So I thought I'd um, do a, a palette knife painting with you, and you can see the sequence of, of how I go about it. So I don't know where you would start, but I start with the sky. Now in this photo, it's definitely lying because there's no way you'd get a white sky like that. Uh, it would either be gray or um, uh, I'm going to imagine that it's actually a blue sky because there's a lot of sun happening there. There may be a few clouds around. So I'm just going to ignore the fact of what the photo is telling me because they do lie. They um, they don't necessarily show the true colours as you might see with a portrait. Uh, a portrait has definitely, um, in, in a photograph, is different to real life. So just remember the photos lie. So I do often refer to the, the true sky. So I often stick my head out the window and see the blue sky as it is. So I'm just going to mix. You can see I'm mixing on the white, which is in the middle. Now, for me, a blue sky has that hair of magenta in it. See how I'm mixing? I'm holding a palette knife over the top like that. So my fingers are sitting underneath. If you have a cheap palette knife, I might add, um, you haven't got enough height here. So just make sure you have a palette knife with a bit of extra height. So there we are. If you um, just push it around, push it into each other, into itself. Now I'm going to ice my cake. The sun's on the left, so I can get a bit lighter on this side. I've run out of paint, so I'll just bring a bit of white in. See how long this takes. I'm not trying to beat the clock, but let's see how long it takes. So I'm bringing more white in. Of course, the sky gets lighter as it comes down. It really is like icing a cake. Don't know how many cakes you've iced, but it is beautiful and spongy, creamy. Uh, I'm going to come back to this. I'm just laying the paint down. Okay, now I'm just going to wipe that off because what I want, which you might see in the afternoon, this is obviously in the afternoon. Um, for me, I can see the way the shadows are forming. Uh, just pop a little bit of um, magenta and clean white, a little bit more that I can see. I'm going very carefully because um, the colours are very strong. Oops, I went too strong then. I was too, too careful and now I'm too strong. Never mind. There we go. A little bit of yellow ochre. So 
That's lovely, but it's a little bit strong. So I'll shift away and come over here. So you can see how I'm mixing hand over the top. A lot of people want to revert back to that, but no, you've got to be over the top like this, pushing it around and I'll come in to the horizon. See where I am. I'm just slapping on the paint at the moment and I'll come back and smooth it out. It's going to be a bit of a cake. There we go. All right, so now I'll work it in. And so I'll work from the bottom up. Crisscrossing. Beautiful paint. So yeah, I'm not battling the drying of the acrylic paint. There's a real advantage to oil paint and that's this. Being able to work it in. Beautiful. Okay, so I'm just going to show you how, how a brush would look. So I'm just going to do a section. I'm, I'm hoping you can pick it up on the camera, but I'll just do a section here to show you the difference. So it both work, it all works, doesn't matter. Um, but if I'm, can you pick up on those brush strokes at all? Yeah. Great, so see how I'm, it actually throws the light differently from there to there. So just, um, yeah, just um, crisscrossy or you can go across, but you can see it has a different look. So I'll take it back again. Whoops, that was blue. Of course, I can scrape that off. And I'll make it all the same. So there's no right or wrong. It's just what you like. We all like different things, but I've just come to love it, love it all. So it depends how I feel. So one day I'll like palette knife, and the next day I'll like the brush. So it doesn't matter. A little bit of darker there. Just making sure it's all covered. I uh, don't like to have bare canvas. That can go yellow in years to come. Thank you to all my subscribers and Patreons and also to DJ Gosper for allowing me to use her wonderful music. Keep calm and paint.